Welcome, Logic Beach, to the Wholesome Crypto Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Thanks for having me. I've been looking forward to this. Yeah, me too. And uh, I know that you've been in crypto space for a little while, especially with your puzzle that you've shown to us, the 222-2222. That was a fun day, exciting day. And yeah, you've created an awesome NFT project where you had to solve a puzzle in order to unlock the private key and obtain 2.22 ETH. Um, yeah, so <laughs> we can talk about yeah. how that actually unfolded later. But yeah, yeah so, so that's going on right now. No one solved it yet. So, so <laughs> it's an awesome yeah, it's an awesome use case. And you do more than that, of course. You use art, music. You're full of different awesome projects. But you know, to learn more about Logic and how you got into this scene, what were you doing before even hearing about crypto, before even hearing about Bitcoin? Yeah, um, that's the that's the right question. So I started like my adult life working in construction. Uh, I grew up doing tile, ceramic tile, you know, mm-hmm. uh, hot summers, you know, dust and all that. <laughs> uh, so it's kind of a funny place to start to where I ended up. <laughs> uh, yeah, I worked for myself. I was self-employed doing tile uh, in just random people's houses. Like I get phone calls, yeah. just go do estimates myself. You know, I was like a I look young now. Uh, I'm 29. So <laughs> when I was 18, 19 doing this stuff, a lot of people just would not take me seriously. It's kind of interesting because they're just like, who's this kid? I'm not going to let him tear apart my house. <laughs> that's true. I mean, especially someone's house. But I mean, that's awesome. It's it's a very like entrepreneurial spirit because I was kind of the same way growing up. I always try to like try to find ways to make money on my own. I, I didn't like, uh, again, at that age, it's kind of like, it's hard to find a job where it's not something that's behind like a kitchen or like cooking something up or serving some food it's kind of like oh what can i do it's kind of different but that's awesome you went out in that direction so i mean yeah. how yeah how was that experience like what, what was the a, a takeaway from doing that for so for x amount of years and what were you thinking i think i sort of yeah like that was sort of the family business that's what i grew up into mm-hmm. right so it made sense to sort of just go with that like i tried to go to college <laughs> right out of high school and uh i signed up for a degree in physics and i just after that first semester i was just like i i'm not i don't want to do this i don't want to go to college uh so i sort of just did tile for a while and traveled as much as i could um in 2013 and this is going to get into where i first heard about crypto uh i was living in what i like to call a frat house without college it was like four of my best friends and my girlfriend who's now my wife working in the other room. Yeah. Congrats. Thanks. Uh, she's awesome. That's, that's Brits and Dottie for those of you who don't know, but so it was a wild time. A lot of, uh, we did house shows and keg parties and just, you know, you can imagine what it yeah. was like. It was trashed all the time. My <laughs> wife was missing. She was pissed off about the bathroom. Most of the oh, I can imagine. <laughs> rough. That's rough. No, no one cleaned anything. <laughs> I mean, it was like us and like me and her were pretty much the only people that didn't clean. But anyways, my, it was a party house through and through. It was, it was free and fun and, and crazy. But one of my of friends, <laughs> he mentioned, oh, you can buy acid on this website. And I was like, uh, he says, you download or you, you buy this stuff called Bitcoin and use that as currency on the, the Silk Road. Yeah. And I remember when he first described this to me, I was thinking, you're going to go to prison. Yeah. Like, you, you're going to jail. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> you're going to ship drugs to our house? Like, that's insane. I didn't realize how much that actually does happen through the USPS. Like, okay. So that was my introduction to cryptocurrency. So my first, uh, like, view of it was that, I, I don't know. I'm not touching that. I'm not going anywhere near that, mm-hmm. right? And that was in probably summer 2013. I don't remember when Bitcoin mooned that time, the 2013, 2014, yeah. uh, real big spike. Uh, it, it entered my radar again because one of my older brothers said, hey, I wonder if your friend still, does he still hold any Bitcoin? Like he's probably doing pretty well by now because I think when he was actually using it, it was like 20 to $40 and wow. a few of them, nothing crazy. And so that was sort of how I was introduced to it for a long time. I didn't pay attention. And... And I think January, February, 2014, I was like, okay, what's the next one? What's the next one that's going to do this? Everyone has that thought. Like, I want to get in on this. Uh, I didn't have a computer that I, like I have now where I could have actually mined anything. So I just looked on Cripsy.com, which was I a, remember that site. It's an exchange. Uh, and I bought a bunch of Dogecoin, uh, which, you know, a little bit of US dollar made a big, a, a big dollar of, or a big amount of Dogecoin on the screen. So I was like, hey, yeah, you know, about <laughs> 40 
50 bucks, something like that, which would have been cool now, right? Uh, but Cripsy exit scam, if you guys remember Cripsy. Mm -hmm. And so that's that just is gone. <laughs> it's a lifelong lesson for everybody. Always take your money out of exchanges as best as possible. Yes. Because you don't own it until it's on your own wallet. Yeah, at that time, I was not ready to be self-sovereign or <laughs> hold my crypto the way it was supposed to. I was just in, I was in it for the money, right? Yeah. Um, so that was, my first experience was drugs. It's probably bad. You're going to jail. I'm not probably going to touch crypto. Yeah. The second, I got exit scammed and lost my Doge. Not a good experience so far, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no. So from 2014 to 2017, I really just, it was off my radar. I didn't care. Um, I don't know when Cripsy exit scammed. It was probably somewhere in there. Yeah. I just held the Dogecoin and forgot about it, basically. But in the summer of 2017, my brother was listening to, I have a lot of brothers. So I'd be riding in the car and he's talking okay. about it, playing a podcast or something. But Free Keen New Hampshire is like a, a Free Keen podcast. Free Keen. I don't exactly know how it's spelled. Okay. They're, they're pretty like hardcore libertarian types. And... He was. They were talking about Bitcoin. Uh, this is the next big thing. This is how to, you know, escape the banks, escape the government, that kind of stuff. And so, my brother sort of pushed it. He's like, "Yeah, you should probably buy some Bitcoin." And we, I was still just doing tile at the time. Uh, let me think. The timeline's sort of messy here because at, at some point I started going to college again, uh, part time in like 2013. Okay. Uh, I was in college for six years. <laughs> I mean, I was in college for five years. It took me a long time to graduate. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Good. I mean, that's the best way to do it. I. I can talk about that in a minute, but anyways, um, I bought some Bitcoin, probably like two hundred fifty dollars worth, which I think at the time was maybe a quarter or less. I don't remember exactly. Leading up to the August hard fork, I can't remember if that was Segwit or the Bitcoin Cash situation. Either way, yeah. I remember <laughs> thinking, "Oh, hard fork, so it's going to split the blockchain." That doesn't that sounds risky. So I sold before that because I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> it was all in Coinbase, but yeah. So I missed the forked coins, right? I think oh, was. man. <laughs> That's all good. All right. So after that, I was like, okay, I got more and more obsessed as these things happen. It's funny because I've heard Superfizz mention this before that it took him one time hearing about Bitcoin to get into it. It took me like three or four times even trying it before I was like really obsessed. Yeah. Were you so, Were you always into yeah. like tech was like learning about the tech scene, the internet, uh, community farms? Was that your like? Not really. So you weren't into that no. that much, okay? I liked computers when I was young, but I just like played games. I was sort of into com like uh, video editing. Okay. I like to try to animate. Uh, I actually have a, a catalog of animation videos I did from the the times that I'm describing on my YouTube channel. Uh, mostly claymation and stop motion awesome. weird stuff, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. Really good hobby to have back then. Uh, right. So after that, I, I I learned about Ethereum, but the only reason, like I guess. Reddit probably, yeah. But what really happened is I got into EOS, EOS, oh, man. which I know I, I <laughs> fell for it, and uh, I I wanted to invest in EOS. So this is how I got involved in Ethereum: is I had to buy Ethereum to buy Ethos or EOS. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I downloaded, made a mask. I had no idea what I was doing. It, was, it felt terrifying, like I was just going to lose all my money. I actually did lose like forty dollars on two failed transactions. It's like, what is going on? Yeah, <laughs> I'm losing it all. We all have. I only have a few hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> well, at the time, I was living in a dungeon apartment in like a basement of this building, uh, going to college with my girlfriend. Like one studio apartment, just like investing all the money that we kind of had. <laughs> Very reckless. Uh, I I only bought like hundred and fifty four exactly. EOS, <laughs> and I held it for a few years. But around that time, I met Superfizz through Reddit in our in the town, right? Mm -hmm. It was like the, the town subreddit. And uh, he set up some posts. He's like, hey, if you guys have stuff you want to get rid of, uh, post it all here. We can just like swap and get, you know, get clutter out of your house. And I said, hey, that computer case is nice. And I was going to meet him on campus. He doxed me. He went through my Reddit and I was not careful back then. I had no idea. He went through everything I was interested in. He found everything in his house that he didn't want that yeah, I thought he, might, he thought I would be interested in. And uh, yeah, I just thought that was kind of weird, <laughs> but also really cool. Thanks, Super Fizz. I still, these headphones came from that. Uh, oh, wow. That meeting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he found that I had some monster headphones that like broke. And so he gave me these ones. Man, he's, thing. yeah, he's, I feel like he's like a <laughs> top community organizer, like, hype man he's always he's always like trying to get more people into this space and he's doing great yes yeah, definitely he got me obsessed uh 
so yeah, he's like a really good community organizer. Mm-hmm. He knows like certain people, certain that wear certain hats, and these he's people like a, together they can, the hub, yeah, the middle of the hub, exactly. <laughs> so really, a lot of me getting totally obsessed into Ethereum is probably his fault. Um, he sort of brought me into the local crypto group, and I, that's sort of where I blossomed. Uh, really interested in Ethereum. I got really interested in like smart contracts and really just all of it. Mm-hmm. I think that's the whole story. <laughs> well, I mean that's amazing because. The thing is, everyone has their horror stories ex- with experimenting with crypto early on in the beginnings when they first heard about it because it, it was hard. It was new tech. If you weren't tech savvy, you weren't going to get it. And anytime you did a transaction, I would have a mini heart attack. So if I ever did any like, <laughs> oh, I got now like uh, my, my $100 worth of ETH, I'm moving it off of Coinbase into my own wallet. I'm like freaking out because like, did it go through it? Is there enough confirmations? Like, yep. And it's as someone who knows it's going to be fine and I can see everything happening on a blockchain and who is tech savvy, I still have a hard time believing it. So it's just, it's normal. And at a certain point, yeah. it's like the only way you're going to learn too is going through hard times because <laughs> you're during the ICO craze and you weren't the, you weren't the only one for sure going through that. What, what next project do I, do I invest in? And it sounds like a legit project and I've been burned for sure plenty Mm -hmm. um oh yeah i bought a iota for 50 dollars or something crazy wow (laughs) right at the top or whatever it was or like the very top and it's just a learning (laughs) experience i think it's just that's why it's like the most important uh, advice is always put money that you're okay you can stomach to lose otherwise no but if you can stomach to lose it then it's that's how you learn yeah, I, I hate the phrase "what you're willing to lose" because like no one's really willing to just throw it away, but it's what won't destroy you if you do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. and I also think of it. I think I was talking to somebody else about this on, on my show, but it's kind of like your college tuition into learning how to use crypto. <laughs> you you pay that time. you pay that money to yeah. learn. <laughs> I love that. That's hilarious. <laughs> I probably literally invested some of my money from college. Like, you know, uh, if you're poor, if you're poor enough, you get money to go to school from the state or whatever. <laughs> and I probably invested some of that. And uh, here I am now. <laughs> so now that you've kind of understood the scene or you're, you're finally like, getting a good hold of Ethereum, um, Superphase is kind of like showing you like, oh, this is how the tech works. What starts firing off in your head that, especially as an artist, I know the Ethereum community is huge on supporting artists, especially in the NFT space. Are you, are your, is your brain starting to fire its neurons thinking, oh, this is how cryptocurrency can be used more than money. What, what was going on through your mind? Hmm. I think that's a pretty good segue. Uh, one, one day Superfizz mentioned to me, he said that Ethereum was I imagine Palpatine and uh, Star Wars. He's like, it's like, it's a a path to financial independence, freedom, basically. And, uh, you know, at those, at that time, I was like, I don't really see how I could do that. I'm late to the game, but no, he was right. You know, so I think I'd like to say that Superfiz is sort of like my, my mentor. I probably pestered him a lot though with questions, (laughs) (laughs) but yeah, so I, I, I go by the name Logic Beach, which is sort of my moniker for, it started with music, right? I, I read a book called Logic Beach by Exerbia uh, and loved it. Uh, it was it was so cool. So I adopted the name. I've been making music and I paint and I art and everything. I've done art galleries, but I, I think it really didn't start with NFTs for me, realizing that ETH or even Bitcoin can be a tool for, for artists. Um, before the Bitcoin happen, happening in 2020, I, I, I've always been into Boards of Canada, but I was watching a documentary somebody made about them and they were hiding stuff in their music. In the audio, you could like suss out like pictures and different weird stuff. And it hit me all at once. It's like, that's it. I'm going to make a puzzle and I'm going to hide a private key in my album and then release it that way. And coming from a musician, like you could pay a promoter or yeah. a label and they would like advertise for you or whatever, but it wouldn't really go anywhere, especially me. I'm small time. Uh, I don't have a lot of money to invest in my music other than just making it. So instead of paying, yeah, I'll say a few hundred because that's all I put in the first puzzle. <laughs> instead of paying a, a few hundred dollars uh, for a promoter or for advertising for my album, I, was, I just sent it to a seed that I made. I learned a little bit about how uh, seeds are derived and how they work at that time. I didn't realize that the last character is a, is a checksum, right? So 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, that's something a lot, a lot of people don't know. Yeah. So, yeah, I learned a lot more about crypto once I started to dig into how can I hide stuff using this technology in my album. So yeah, uh, I released that album on May 19th, 2020, which is the Bitcoin happening. Uh, it was some, some people threw money into the pot, which I, I was a police. If you want to see this growth, throw some stuff in. And it grew to 0. 0.05 Bitcoin, which wasn't a terrible lot, but it was a few hundred dollars. So the puzzle was like fun. And it took about two months with hints for people to solve that. Uh, that was a really fun learning experience for me, just making the puzzle and then watching as people tried to solve it on Reddit and mm -hmm. the feedback, instant feedback was really cool. So what, how is it constructed and like, how would people look at it and try to find out what to solve? Like, how is it for sure. the instructions? One of my favorite things to do is to make music videos. I, I just love visuals matching up with audio. So it was a 10, I don't remember how many songs I had on that album, maybe nine. It was a nine song album, 12 words. You're looking for 12 words in the right order. Um, there's a video for every song, like the entire album, all of my albums that I release always have videos for every song, right? Mm -hmm. Even some of them are just like simple stuff, but sort of like visual clues. I mean, it wasn't easy. It really wasn't. The order was actually hidden in something called the Feigenbaum or Falgenbaum constant. The album is called Bifurcations, which is like a math term for, uh, it's, it's like chaos theory and stuff. Uh, I learned a lot about that too, making the puzzle just to try to like play into it. I, I use these things, these yeah. little projects just to like obsess into things and dive really deep, right? So there was 12 words and in the Feigenbaum concept at the very end, like this just like robot voice reading it off. And at the end, it starts to get let words or uh, numbers wrong. And nobody caught this for the longest time. But if you actually go and look which numbers it got wrong, that's the order of the songs and the words in those songs. Uh, uh, that was that one. I felt really clever about that, that nobody got it for a long time. I actually had to sort of say, hey, look at that number. <laughs> that number. Uh, so that was really cool. The guy that won it actually made a really good write-up. Uh, I think he goes by Elron V. Hubbard on Medium. And his write-up of that puzzle is like flattering. Oh, <laughs> like man. it's really good. I was getting my write-up was like a single text page with short description, but he put pictures and like all sorts of cool stuff in there. Isn't it that's uh, amazing? Isn't like I love that about the community and crypto and it just like the people who are really passionate about it, they just want to promote other people who are also passionate about it. Yeah. I love that. Actually his name's Pogo and he's like a master puzzle solver from what I understand. Oh really? Yeah. And another that's group cool. That all I know is like the person named Leah, they crush it. Every time I post a puzzle, I'm like, I got to make it hard enough that they don't solve it. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> it's, it's their fault that my puzzle's harder this time, just so you guys know. <laughs> it's actually not, in my mind, it's not harder. It's just not technical. As I played away from what I understand other people's strengths to be, I went all like left brain creative, like uh, as much as possible. So yeah, that's sort of a hint. That's some alpha I'll drop on your yeah on your podcast no terminals <laughs> <laughs> no programming <laughs> i mean i was looking at your puzzle and i was like i i was confused I, i'm not I, like a puzzle solver by any means i think that's definitely like sudoku is one of those i do but yeah. were puzzles like something you're always into or just kind of naturally hmm. generated after because of crypto and it is pretty much crypt cryptography which is kind of a puzzle i i can't say that i just like seek seeked out puzzles uh like as a like when i was younger but I, i've always been to like computers and i discovered linux when i was like i don't know kind of late in life i was 18 but i found a computer in a dumpster and i was like i couldn't find windows to install on it yeah. but i learned about ubuntu and it was like ubuntu 10 i think good times yeah <laughs> and so that's a puzzle in itself just getting hardware to work like just figuring out problems solving it like i do like that kind of stuff uh -huh. Gotcha. Uh, I like I like Wordle. Well, I guess now it's called Etherly. Uh, oh, have made, you seen that? It's somebody made one, and it's basically Wordle, but it's with like uh, Bitcoin or uh, cryptocurrency type words. Okay, it's fun. I like it. Uh, me and Brittany, uh, we play it every night. <laughs> we get new ones. Oh, well, the new ones. I, I gotcha. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Uh, yeah, I guess sort of. Maybe I'm a puzzle solver at heart, and I just don't know it. I, I'm more of a puzzle maker, I guess. Mm -hmm. That's I fair. love to try to. I, I like. Crypto or cryptography too. Um, reading into that was a lot of fun. Uh, coming from my background in like physics and math and stuff, uh, I, I I dove pretty deep at one time. I can't explain it, but elliptic curves are beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> they are. I mean, I took yeah, I did electrical engineering in college and a lot of math courses. But 
I never thought to like apply. I mean, again, I'm not, I wouldn't consider myself an artist either, but I think now is a time where I'm more finding my creative side in my life. You're an animator, right? Yeah, I do animation. Some, yeah, now I do sometimes for a, sh- yeah. for a TV show, uh, Bitcoin and Friends. Really? That's, that's cool. Yeah, it's called Bitcoin and Friends. Wait a minute. Yeah. I think I've seen an episode or two of this. Isn't like there a coin that he's like throwing up? Yeah, 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 and- exactly. I've seen this. Okay, I haven't. I think I maybe saw the first and second episode uh, a while back. I'm not the main animator though. There's a someone, uh, Jake. He's a really good animator. He handles most of. It. I kind of just help out a little bit where I can with lip syncing and such. So that's really cool. But whatever I can, <laughs> again, like, that's the thing. Like whatever I can do to like open that side of my brain and be more creative and give back to a community that I love, which is crypto. Yeah, yeah that's what I want to do. <laughs> It, so I'm sure that there's a catalog of these episodes that I haven't seen yet. Is that right? Um, so we're actually redoing the season. So season one all over again. Um, kind of like updating it, better animation. Uh, that will be coming out hopefully sometime in the future. We don't have a date yet. but I thought the animation was fine from what I saw. Uh, but uh, I can't remember the voice cast. There wasn't there some, uh, there was some bigger names in there, wasn't there not? Yeah, I think yeah, PD... Uh, P.D. Jones or something. I think he was in it. Um, but did you guys actually have Vitalik doing Vitalik voice? No, 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 we didn't. Okay, that would be awesome. <laughs> I don't, yeah, that would. Be cool. <laughs> I, I, it's been so long. I really don't remember. I like. I remember the Bitcoin throwing up bitcoins. <laughs> that's oh, P.D. Pablo. That's, that's who was doing uh, Jones on the. It's show. awesome. Yeah, yeah. So, but that's like again, like yeah, Chris and uh, Jake and yeah, like the Allen brothers are like the ones really putting into the show like that and i'm trying to help out as a, however i can i kind of got in it as a fan so that's kind of you know the way you get into crypto is you're a fan of something help contribute yeah. help promote and work with the team i'm sure you've seen uh, stoner cats uh i that's sort of uh that's the that's the second in my mind animation like tv show that's come out of crypto uh but i actually haven't seen an episode i was like yeah. I don't know what I, got on a stoner cat. <laughs> I know I, like, I have to get one, right? That's the only way to watch it. Yeah, um, uh, actually, I think Superfizz sent me mine because my transaction failed. So did one of his, though. <laughs> uh, that one was uh, very spectacularly. <laughs> that's the like tough part about anyone new in the space when they find out their transaction fails. But it's also a great way to teach you, like, why does it fail? How does it fail? How do gas? How's gas work? What's what's Gwei? Like, what's what's all this? What sounds like nonsense is about so. Right, it kind of yeah. forces you down the rabbit hole because you get into that troubleshooting mindset. Yeah, got to solve the puzzle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, now that you know, you've been in this space and working, pretty much now it's kind of like your full time uh, yeah, career. Yeah. Like this is what you're dedicated to. Um, yes, I can talk a little bit about how that happened too. Yeah. So, I was working in IT after college. Uh, which wasn't exactly what it wasn't what I went to school for, but I was just good at it. Yeah. Right. And Ethereum wasn't like mooning or anything at that time. I just sort of didn't want to stay at my desk job anymore. Mm-hmm. And I figured, you know, I think I can do this. I'm just going to take a leap and just do tiles sometimes, which I was still working for myself and doing backsplashes was like really perfect because I could do like one every week or so <clears throat> and be okay. Like that was enough income. And that was summer 2020 everyone was quitting their job right or had that not started yet anyways <laughs> i i sort of just it was a leap of faith really and i just invested more and kept working didn't sell anything uh just kept stacking eth kept what else did i invest in rocket pool nice. uh, i started investing in rocket pool around 2019 not a lot until you know, uh, it was a good investment. It was a, it was a good choice. I still, I stake with Rocket Pool right now. I'm running a node. Nice. But as it got into 2021, it blew my mind. I was like, wow. <laughs> okay. That was the right choice. I, I, I'm not super rich or anything like that, but, uh, I've been full-time Ethereum for, uh, two coming up, going on two years. Yeah. Uh, I guess now I actually just accepted a job here. Right. right oh, there. Plus. <laughs> yeah. Oh, those guys are awesome. So, so uh, I think my official position is technical support technician or something, support technician, something yeah. like that. Uh, in my mind, I aid people become self-sovereign crypto sapiens. Nice. <laughs> That's what I do. Uh, I support people uh, 
with their lattice wallet. It's really cool. I've only been there for a week and two days, but I, I really like it. The team is awesome. Yeah, they're also they're so awesome. I mean, I met all of them in uh, East Denver too. They were so yeah. cool. Uh, I had um, Justin. I didn't get a hoodie. I got one of the shirts, but they were out of I know. I didn't get any other clothes either. I came too late to them. I was like, oh, man, I couldn't even find you guys for the longest time. But it was, yeah. Yeah, they were sort of tucked off, weren't they? Yeah. Someone had to tell me where they were. <laughs> but they're, they're like, killing it, I think. And I'm so excited for them to keep releasing some more wallets because I don't have one yet. Yeah, uh, they'll have a restock very soon. So, uh, yeah, as you're working in IT, you're dabbling in... Oh, Ethereum, yeah. but yeah, that's, when was, that's something I didn't mention. <laughs> <laughs> but when was the um, cutoff point between? All right, this is this is going to be my life now. Where crypto is where I'm going to dedicate my career. So, in like a normal job, you have to be there eight to five, no matter what. Yeah, uh, and I mean that's obvious to everyone. But <laughs> a lot of the time, working in IT at the university I worked at, there was nothing to do. Right. There was no tickets. Nothing was popping up in the queue. You know, certain times it just weren't busy. I started remoting into my Linux box at home and just sort of just learning whatever I could. I I dabbled with smart contracts a little bit. I, I wish that I was a programmer. I don't yeah. really have like that programmer's mind. I wish that I did. I've taken classes, probably like 16 hours of college courses in programming. And I still, when I get to a, like a blank terminal or blank slate, I just like, I don't even know where to start, you know? <laughs> It comes with experience. Like the worst part about programming is you have to do it to get good. I know, it's awful. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, a lot of the downtime at my job, uh, I'd sit at my desk and remote into my Linux box back at home and just study and basically just sort of stay current on what was happening in Ethereum. Uh, I don't remember when it was, but whenever Uniswap was like new, yeah. when they still had that little red skull on it, it was like use it your own risk. I used it with a bunch of different wallets back then. Like, I, I think back on that day and just like that point in time, I was like, that was extremely valuable. Just messing around, sitting at my desk at work, making weird swaps on Uniswap before gas was crazy, right? I mean, that airdrop was wild. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, sadly, I didn't mess around with Uniswap that early, but yeah, they've done, I think they've definitely shown the light of what, again, DeFi is and what DeFi can do if it's yeah. constructed properly. And so, yeah, in this, you've been in, you're seeing this happen. You're getting more into it. How, 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 like, I feel like you're, you're like in a, I'm surprised your mind's not firing off so many just different ideas in your head on what it can be used for. <laughs> well, that's, I, you're going to ask this later, but <laughs> I might answer it right now. You're going to say, well, what's your pet peeve in crypto? Uh -huh. What's your crypto pet peeve? <laughs> And my pet peeve in crypto is that if I take a day off of thinking about crypto, I, I'm so behind. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> I wish that, I mean, on the spot, I probably won't be able to think of a lot of use cases. But if like if I take a day off crypto, I'm a week behind, yeah. right? And so when I was actually working in IT without a lot to do at that particular job, I was constantly on it. I was, I was, I was almost, I was the closest that anyone would ever be to actually being like caught up in the world of Ethereum. <laughs> Which, um, it takes a whole team to be caught up with Ethereum. Yeah. Um, now I just sort of, I still try to stay pretty close to it, but I listen to Bankless Podcast mm -hmm. or um, like a roll-up or something like that. Uh, so, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's a 24-7 industry, so it never, never ends. But like, what do, you, what do you do then outside of crypto? How does, do you have a, like hobbies that you do outside of crypto? Like do you just Absolutely. decompress? What's um, what's your life like if crypto <laughs> wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Was um, I like to call myself a person who wears a lot of hats. Um, I love to paint. Yeah, <laughs> I, I hike, we camp as much as possible. Me and my wife will just get in the car and just drive out west into the mountains for a month at a time sometimes. That's cool. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I know how to decompress. <laughs> Usually in those times I come back and I'm like, no, there's not, I'm not going to try to catch up on what just happened. There's no way. Uh, I've missed, I've missed things just like, you know, taking those cause everyone needs to sort of leave crypto for a little while. Like it happens. You get crypto burnout, like in the world, like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. You just sort of have to take a step back and not think about it for a while, especially <laughs> maybe now uh, if we're entering a bear market, a lot of people are, that stresses a lot of people out. Right. Um, I've, 
I can say I survived the bear market of 2018, mostly because I do a lot of different stuff. You know, I'm not always completely stuck to Ethereum. Uh, I love making music. Like, I, I think I've released four or five albums now. I have another one that I'm about to finish. Uh, I just released a puzzle too. So like, another one? aside from crypto and everything, well, the, the puzzle is the bits puzzle you were talking about. And I have another album right now. I'm probably going to hide my life savings in it and just not tell anyone how to start the puzzle and not give any hints. <laughs> how do you wild? So. I'm going to leave my keys to my staking note. Uh, good luck. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I have a lot of different things that I do outside of crypto that keep me sort of sane. It, it, I can't imagine just being completely stuck to it all the time. Me personally, I, I think I would burn out. You know? I feel that, uh, yeah. That's something that I left college with. I was completely burned out after five years of a physics degree. Uh did I say five? I meant six. <laughs> the first two years was at a local community college, uh, but the last four were like super hardcore. Mm -hmm. So I left that, I left college with like total burnout, went straight into a job, still burned mm -hmm. out. I, you know, through all that burnout, I mean, I found something I was obsessed with, which was Ethereum. And I don't know, it was just, it was interesting enough that it was different from what my burnout came from, that it, it sort of, it worked as like a distraction from what my current state was. Yeah, that's totally needed. You're right because crypto is easily uh, can easily burn someone out, and I felt Definitely. it before too. Just just by keeping up with news, it's stressful enough, let alone working in it or trying to create something in it. And I've realized when I do take a break and come back into it, I know I've missed a lot of stuff, but I don't. I'm not missing that I missed that stuff. I'm like, oh, okay, that happened. On to the next thing. It yeah. Just, it kind of teaches you that things are going to keep moving with or without you. Just be okay with missing things and <laughs> just get back into it when you get, whenever you have time to get back into it in a much more positive mindset. Exactly. I definitely know that some of the times that I decided to like leave or like go on long trips to decompress and not think about crypto for a while, I missed key things that changed like when DeFi summer started. Mm -hmm. I came to that late and I think whenever the NFT craze really kicked off, I was probably not thinking about Ethereum as much. Well, that's not entirely true. <laughs> You're always thinking about it somewhere I, back there. Yeah, yeah. I, and even though I came to what I consider late into the NFT craze, I still, I was thinking, you know, I'm going to draw all these robots and just like mint them and see if people want to support me as an artist. And that was amazing. How much love I felt from the community at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called Logic Bots, if you hadn't heard of it. It's uh, all hand-drawn robots. They're all, all on like, like little, not cardstock, but like blotter paper, small uh and I watercolor, well, Brittany actually did the uh, watercolor washes and we just scanned them. And yeah, I, that was, you know, like I said before, one of my favorite ways to learn is to like, maybe I didn't say this, maybe I just thought it, have a project, have some sort of goal in mind and then learn the tools along the way. I think Superfizz would call that, uh, that's how you get Swiss cheese knowledge. So you only <laughs> solve the problems you have to complete your project. But I love doing that. It's a really good way to get obsessed into a thing and learn a lot. Same. So yeah, I, I used uh, Build Guild or Austin Griffith's uh, Scaffold ETH project okay. and sort of learned how to deploy a smart con or not a smart well, it is a smart contract, but learned how to deploy an NFT uh, web page uh, mm -hmm. storefront. So yeah, I, I made twenty of them that way, and I did the other twenty on OpenSea. And the reason I did that is just in case my smart contract failed spectacularly because I was not confident. You know, it was <laughs> I don't it was, yeah. it was real. I feel that. <laughs> It, it was real ETH, and I remember when I deployed the contract, I was like on Signal with Superfizz, like, I did it, I think this is the address that it's going to have, and I was like sitting there shaking, like, I don't know if it's going to work, oh, man. you know, I just submitted like 0.5 ETH in gas to make this happen, which is a lot for me. It's a lot for and, anyone. It's expensive. Yeah. <laughs> and it works, and so the first thing I did was I took my own ETH and bought one of my own robots for myself, and made sure that the withdrawal function would work before I like advertised it or even let the website out oh, there. Nice. And it, I, I pulled it off. It was, it was really successful, and uh, I felt a lot of love from a lot of the people that I had interacted with through like Rocket Pool and Poap and all the projects. Eastaker, all the. I mean, I think Eastaker even helped me. Uh, sort of, we did a live stream uh, on the Eastaker platform. That was awesome. Yeah, uh, all these people that I had interacted with over years, uh, just learning and getting obsessed with crypto. And I'd never used Discord before this, but I made a lot of like real life friends on Discord. That's also another great thing about crypto that I realized too is how many real life friends I've made just just by being in a community that is just kind of like minded and excited for the same thing and passionate. I've 
you know, travel across the world just to meet the people I met online, which is kind of absurd to think <laughs> about, you know, back in the 90s or 2000s, like, ah, you shouldn't, you shouldn't go talk to people online and go meet them. But now it's like, probably dangerous, probably, dangerous, <laughs> probably unsafe, probably trying to get money from yeah. you. But now it's like, everyone that I know online, let's all meet in one place, like ETH Denver and <laughs> meet each other. That's probably one of the, yeah, one of the main reasons I wanted to go to ETH Denver is, you know, I'm not a developer. Uh, okay, I've just played a smart contract. I'm a builder, maybe once. <laughs> but a lot of people that I knew online were going to be there. Mm -hmm. And we couldn't miss that. It, it was so much fun. We had a blast. Absolutely the same. And yeah, I, I met like half the people at least that I've interviewed at, the, at ETH Denver there. I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm sure you have something very similar. Yeah. These are all my... These are all my po oh, apps man. from just East Denver right in the beginning of 2022. Jeez. <laughs> all that East Denver, what East Denver really was, was a chance for us to, to all get our uh, I Met Them po apps. <laughs> and that was a blast. I think po app has grown significantly. And I'm, the team is, I think, growing now, but they were, you know, they were a small team startup working on their way. And it was such, a, it was also a very natural growth. It wasn't like, uh, just like hugely marketed. Yeah. It was a very slow, natural, organic growth. And it was so beautiful watching it grow and seeing all these different projects say, look at my PO app, download the PO app, go mint it. I'm like, hmm. yeah, yeah, give it to me. You want to collect them all. That was a lot of fun. I hadn't, yeah, I hadn't thought about it like that, but you're right. They didn't advertise anywhere. It was all just the community using it mm -hmm. that made it grow, right? And I think now they have a team of like 90. Yeah. Uh, Britain.eth uh, just joined the team as a curator. Nice. We actually started our new... Both of us started crypto jobs on the same day. <laughs> oh, man. I love it. Yeah, was, it was so cool. I was so glad to meet you guys there because it was just yeah, awesome. I love it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely going to make a po app for you for this show because I made one for Super cool. Quiz and Colfax. So <laughs> you guys, I'm going to make one for everybody. So you're definitely going to get one for being on here. That's the real reason I came. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> get that po app. Yeah, the podcast is good. <laughs> <laughs> so imagine if the world, if you never got into crypto it was never your thing you know how would you see your life being like today hmm. so i've always sort of so i went to school for astronomy and, and physics was like the necessity for astronomy right mm -hmm. i would probably lean into that i mean it really burned me out like i really got burned out in college and i just i, I love astronomy i even applied to go to graduate school uh and i was accepted and we went and saw the place and we looked at the town and I was just like, I don't want to live here. I won't get into where it was, but I don't want a bad name in any school. Mm -hmm. But I sort of decided that, I mean, you're, what you're asking is if crypto wasn't a thing. So I decided on crypto. I did. I, I made the decision and it's crypto for me. It's Ethereum. Um, but if it wasn't there, yeah, I guess I, I'd probably be in a PhD program right now. I, I might have a headache every day. Burning out. <laughs> I mean, I feel yeah. it too, man. Like I was thinking about leaving, quitting, and dropping out of college from years yeah. and while I was in it. But I just, <laughs> you know, I don't know. Cause... Yeah, I love astronomy and I loved all the, everyone I met in my astronomy program. It was a great program. I just, I don't think I'm cut out for like a PhD. I just don't think I'm cut out for that sort of desk job. Mm -hmm. I don't think I could do it mentally. I'm, I'm all over the place. I'm like, I'm scatterbrained. And that's why I, I think I jive well with crypto because there's so much weird, different stuff going on. I don't really have to focus very well <laughs> most of the time to be successful. And that's why I think I work so well in crypto. Nice. And then, so if you're... Um... I'd, probably, I, I, hmm? I'd probably be living in a van. Um, <laughs> Traveling the world. Or but tra by choice, yes. And I might still do that. <laughs> I work from home. You could. You could get a laptop, <laughs> get some uh, t mobile... LTE, yeah, and there you go. Yeah, like just put Starlink on the roof or something. <laughs> just go drive around the mountains. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, if you weren't now, if um, now if someone came up to you like college student, hey, Logic Beach, I'm having a hard time deciding what to do with my career, like at, in today's date, and you kind of see a little bit of yourself in them. What kind of guidance would you <laughs> give? Because you can't tell someone to drop out of college because it's like, <laughs> but. Yeah, you can still complete college and finish your schooling, but how would you kind of guide them into like, this is the advice I have for you to start your, start looking into crypto, start your, maybe having a career path in crypto. 
I think that I struggled with um, having like thinking I had to be perfect at like everything I did. Mm -hmm. And I think that one of the best pieces of advice, I don't know where I heard this is that you don't actually have to be perfect at something. Like if I'm trying to imagine this from that college student's perspective, you just have to be good enough at a few things. So I wouldn't, place all of my focus and all of my energy into one thing, especially if I didn't love it. Yeah. So that's, I mean, like I said, that's why I wear a lot of hats because I, I like a lot of different things, but I can't say that I, other than, you know, Ethereum, my wife, my family, I don't literally like love one thing. Yeah. I, <laughs> I love my dog. <laughs> I, I, I feel you because yeah, I'm like the same type, like I'm, I'm a jack of all trades. I love to learn about as much as I can about everything. Yeah, explore, uh, like, especially, you know, if they're not liking what they're doing, definitely explore. And if they want to get involved with crypto, I'd say don't just become a trader. That's the most boring subclass uh, of theory. That's a bankless quote, and I love uh, it. Uh, you can trade, definitely invest, invest, but don't expect that you're going to make a living doing that. Some people do, and I applaud them because that's too stressful for me. I always sell, I sell the bottom and I buy the top, and I'm just... <laughs> i can't do exactly. it exactly <laughs> and i that's like one thing i always stress out I'm like just please don't don't be a trader don't listen to those tiktok videos or youtube videos if someone's trying yeah. to give you trading advice that either means they're making money off you somehow yep and if they're so good at it why would they give you all their secrets and not just trade for themselves and live their own lavish lifestyle without being so public but exactly people love the attention <laughs> Uh, when people and family and stuff have asked me over the time, uh, so I tell them, I'm like, you should invest in this because that's what I'm currently obsessed with. But, you know, uh, just in case it ruined your life or whatever, that whole thing. But, <laughs> you know, I told basically everyone in my family to buy a rocket pool when it was like $2. And I don't think any of them, did, none of them did. <laughs> now they're asking me about it. I'm like, I don't know. I kind of feel like uh, bear market's on. Uh, yeah. I'll be investing. <laughs> you know, it's funny. The same thing happened to me, but in um, during my MBA courses, I was talking about Bitcoin a lot. And this was back when Bitcoin was $5,000. And I was sadly putting all my money into the college instead of Bitcoin. So I didn't, I didn't make big at all, but whatever, <laughs> this is life. So, but I remember telling everyone, like, hey, like put money into Bitcoin, it's gonna be great. But the amount of like, like jeering and like laughter I got out of like trying to convince people to use crypto, I mean, there's like a handful, <laughs> like one or two people that are like, you know, let me, let me hear you more about this. but. It was wild to think like that they were just not into it, just didn't see it. And yeah. now it's worth what thirty, almost a hit like fifty, sixty K. So yeah. <laughs> it, it just like I don't wanna tell you I told you so, but like this is this is real financial <laughs> monetary value. It's changing the world, Bitcoin, Ethereum, whole cryptocurrency industry. Yeah, this is financial advice. <laughs> is <what> you just... <laughs> <laughs> this is not is financial advice. <laughs> Yeah, I, I imagine that uh, some of the people I went to college with, because I was probably that guy that was like talking about crypto too much. Uh, you know, I was obsessed. I, know. I couldn't help it. I know. It's all I know. Everything leads back to crypto somehow. Like if you start talking to me, it's going to happen. I'm sorry. Like, it, you know, I wonder what's going to happen. Say if the one day the world does become, I guess, adopts crypto mainstream, it's used on everyday things, every transaction is done on crypto. Are we, are we going to be chatting about crypto the way we do now? Is it or is just going to become... They'll probably fractionalize Bitcoin and it'll start over. <laughs> yeah. No one will talk. I mean, as much as people talk about the economy now, but I guess the interesting part about that is that any player can jump on at any time, mm -hmm. you know, with no borders. I think that's awesome. I don't know. This is, <laughs> it's a brave new world and it's, it's honestly, who knows where it goes from here, really? Like, yeah. Even if it crashes, I'm probably just going to buy more ETH. So I'm not, I'm not devastated. No, you know, I'm in. I'm in this for the long haul. I have a job now. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'm, I'm happy for you. I'm happy you got into it. Yeah. So, to end it off with my favorite question, what is your favorite wholesome crypto moment? Something that warmed your heart in the crypto space. I was supposed to be thinking about this question. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, we can cut a lot of this wait time out. I'm going to answer this question. Just give <laughs> Don't cut any of it out. I will. It's all in. Everyone's going to see a raw video. Yeah. 
favorite wholesome crypto moment? Man, I'm really on the spot now. No, nah, I mean, yeah, you are. <laughs> you are and you're not. It's just more like, yeah, something that's really like, I think, I mean, a lot of it is your general experience in crypto and how you felt through the community, through people like Superfizz, people in the POAP community, people at Grid Plus. It's you launching well, your, yeah, your, your NFT projects. Yeah, I, I think that, the experience I had with that NFT project blew my mind because I sat down thinking, I'm just going to draw some robots and mint them as NFTs. It'll probably cost me a lot uh, to mint all these NFTs. And I just started drawing them. I, I gritted out a piece of paper and drew 30 robots thinking, this is fun. Why not? I like to draw. Um, but the way that the community came together just to support me, it blew my mind. It, it really did. Uh, I'd say that I don't know if that was wholesome because it was also extremely profitable. And I don't want to say that that was my favorite moment just because of how it turned out. But just the support that I got was wholesome and felt like really amazing. Well, even if you just made your money back, I don't think you would feel any different. Yeah, it might pay my taxes this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> afford those. Yeah. But that's awesome. I mean, yeah, the community is always. Also, mm -hmm. I want to mention just East Denver. Uh, that was extremely wholesome. Uh, yeah. Just meeting everyone. It was it, the strangest thing is when someone like they know what I look like, but I don't know what they look like because I'm in my music videos and stuff, or I've talked on a podcast or a podcast, but also just uh, Zoom calls and stuff. And they say, "Hey, you're Logic Beach," and they're like, "Ah, oh, it's nice to meet you." And they, uh, I give them a pull up and they give me theirs, and I'm like, "So, what's your Discord handle?" Yeah. <laughs> that was just really. Like I, I, you have to tell me your Discord name or your Twitter name, or I'm not gonna know who you are. That's so wild. It's a whole new identity. <laughs> <laughs> the the whole second layer of identity is is hilarious. And uh, super fizz. Just the other day, this is wholesome, and this just happened, and it is crypto related. Uh, I was driving, and he sent me a video, and uh, uh, Britain held it up, and like I sort of watched it, but. He was getting rid of a chair, and his son, two or three year old son, said. A uh, real name is going to come pick it up, right? And I don't know how he knows my real name, uh, but I just thought it was really funny because Superfish said, oh, that's Logic Beach. So this uh, two or three-year-old boy, he knows the difference between like real name and internet name. Mm -hmm. I just thought that was interesting. And where does that go into the future? You know, uh, my nephew is 12. We hang out a lot online playing games and stuff. And he, like their entire generation, digital goods are real. You know, these identities that we have online are real. Yeah. yeah. You, you, just, really you just make me think of like the reality we will we will live in the future. Again, the whole idea of crypto is owning your own identity, your own value, your data and money, everything is your ownership. So it's going to be a world where you're a given name, you're born with name, and then your name. Yeah, your government name and then and your real name. your real name, which is whatever you want to be, which is Logic Beach, wholesome crypto. Yeah. <laughs> you know, really, the name Logic Beach. I've sort of like, as a, some, as an artist, I've gone through a lot of names, uh, and Logic Beach has become something that people know, and I can't change it. Like it's it's, it's just what it is now. It's your identity. It's, fine. it's a lot of syllables. <laughs> I mean, it's great, but still, like I wish I had a one word name uh, for my music. <laughs> wholesome crypto. So I got four. <laughs> it's terrible. Yeah, and I like to go by logicbeach.eth too, so that's fine. Oh, man. Just... <laughs> well, just, I'm glad the abbreviation of just Logic Beach. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't go by Logic, though, yeah, for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was so great talking to you. I love what you're working on. I'm excited for your future. I'm excited for everything that you're building and contributing to the ecosystem. And it's needed. More people like you are needed. And I'm, I'm glad to have got the opportunity to talk to you about you and your thank story. You, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Ethereum is empowering. Uh, the community is empowering. Uh, thank you so much for having me on. Thank you so much. See you, everyone.